Hello, everyone. And uh, I'm recording this right here on my phone. I know, it's surprisingly good quality. But I have caught up with a, with a fair bit of reviews for you in this video here. And yeah, I just have four complete reviews, which is of Bohemian Rhapsody, The Meg Black Klansman, and Suspiria. So first, I'll give you my opinion on Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, and that's because I, this is the most recent I saw in theaters. I saw this on, on Monday. Uh, I, I watched uh, The Meg and Black Klansman online. And I saw Spiria about two weeks ago. So yes, let's just get this through here. Alright, so my review for, Bo for Bohemian Rhapsody is... For me, is this, this is like a big compilation of this. Four reviews, sure. Uh, so yeah, um, Bohemian Rhapsody is directed by Brian Singer, even though he left off set and I forgot who else directed this film, my points. Um, but for the most part, I really, really dug Bohemian Rhapsody. I thought I had terrific performances from Rami Malek as Freddie Mercury. I thought he was incredible. Um, let's see if I can see. Yeah, that's actually better. Um, I thought he was incredible in this movie. All the other actors who play Brian May and the, and the other and the drummer and all of them and Mike Myers, all of them were in the movie. I thought they were all, for the most part, really, really good. The movie had a nice visual pop and aesthetic to, to it and a really nice feel, a really nice fondness. It just had this great sense of fun and anguish and true vibrantness that really made the film interesting and fun and memorable. But I do think really, that... I do kind of think this film is, and I do think also, um, the music is incredible. Is a, there's a terrific blend of Rami, of Rami's voice mixed in with Freddie Mercury's, uh, Freddie Mercury's live voice and uh, produced voice, and uh, it kind of comes together. And I'm really this is perfectly blends together really well. I thought it was incredibly well done. It's visually beautiful and it's really aesthetic. And it's, it just really leaves a great impression in your mind, like a great, like a grape flavored gum. It's just really nice and vibrant and fun and beautiful. And like something that just really relish yourself in. As much as I really, really enjoyed that part of the movie, and that is a good majority of the film, I do think the movie is overall a bit of a mix due to the fact that it is ultimately a bio, a bio film. And that within that bio film, you kind of should be more accurate. You kind of should be telling a bit more stuff. Um, and I do think it does kind of get some things off. Like, I do think his Ruby Mac is really good, but is like the overbite of his jaws are a little weird. I also can't help but wonder in my mind, you know, what Sasha Baron Cohen would have done in the role, in the role instead. Um, um, what else is in my mind of it? I also, um, I do think, I, I think I can kind of forgive some in historical accuracy to really focus on the most important ones, but certain things just don't make that much sense. It's like, okay, so he tells his bandmates that he is HIV positive right before, right before uh, um, the Live Aid thing, which is in 1985, but he doesn't act, but within actual historical research, research, like, he doesn't really tell them, um, you know, until 1987, which is two years after. So that's a little bit distracting. So it's, there's a bunch of historical inaccuracies, inaccuracies that kind of do pet me, did this pet me in the wrong way, admittedly. And I just kind of go, and I end up kind of mentally going, why are you doing, why are you not being so historically accurate? But it's just kind of a, it's a little bit frustrating to not see it being so accurate all the time. And it kind of, you know, it, and Freddie Mercury, it for, with, for the most part, within his personal life and all his band, member, band members and all that, he was quite introverted. In this movie, he was very outgoing, so there's some weird character choices I'm not too fond of, but for the most part, I still really dug the movie. Remy Malcolm, for the most part, was really great in the role. Had great music, visual aesthetic, popping musical sound. It was just a nice, good, pop-flavored type of movie. And while it doesn't do, and while it may not offer anything new within the storyline, it's still just so vibrant, fun, and memorable that I really can't help but say it's a positive, fun movie. Even if the historical inaccuracies do, in my mind, are a bit annoying at times, and you know, it kind of does get things about Freddie Mercury ultimately all around is just kind of confusing, but hey, you win some, you lose some. So that's my mind. Um, my next review 
So, um, my rating for Bohemian Rhapsody is that going to be an 84%. Um, quick, now my quick second review is of The Meg, um, with Jason Statham and Ruby Rose. This movie is really stupid. It's dumb, it's ridiculous, it's, it's very much the shallows, not, not the shallows, it's, it's very much Sharknado on a bigger budget, but with actual decent effects and actual good action and acting at times. Uh, the movie definitely becomes a bit too big for its bridges for the points where it does get very emotional. I'm like, I don't buy this for a fucking bit. No, no, stop acting like this is this is like hard to draw out because it's not. I don't believe it for a fucking second. Uh, there's a couple of deaths in the movie where I'm just kind of going, yeah, stop taking yourself with that seriously. There's... And, you know, I do think uh, Jason Statham, for as cool and charismatic as he can be, for the most part, he just comes across a bit too try-hard and just kind of lazy. Like, it, it, you know, he has his accent in there, like, hello, I'm Jason Statham. I know that the son is a classic Welsh to him. But, ultimately, it just kind of comes across kind of fake and not interesting. The action is fun, the effects are decent. The violence is serviceable, even though I do think someone like Eli Roth should have actually directed this instead. It's just a dumb movie, and if you enjoyed it, kind of like for what I did, I, then I'm going to give it a bit of a mixed to positive review. I'm going to give it to Meg a 57%. Um, my next review for you guys is of Suspiria. Um, I really quite liked this movie a lot. It was beautifully well made. It was really well focused. I loved the unique approaching tension and the thrill within the movie. Dakota Johnson, Tilda Swinton, Tilda Swinton as another character in the, entirely is just really funny and weird. It's this very slow, elaborate movie. It, it's very, very slow and elaborate, and yet, um, you also got, um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Chloe Grace Moretz and the she's young like, teen actors in the movie, and they're all really good, and they all, in the movie, knows how to build up the suspense and thrill of what's in there, and of course, it being the remake of one of my favorite home movies of all time, the original Suspiria from 1974, I believe, directed by, um, um, Dario, G Dario Giento, and I thought it was just a, um, which I, that's one of my favorite home movies of all time, and I do think this is, overall, a really good movie, but it fails to kind of grab the, um, and while it does grab the amazing tension and the fear of what's going on, it ultimately, it ultimately kind of forgets what makes the original so good because the original was just so unique and so unclear and so everything was so up in the air. In this film, it lays out a lot of foundations already, and you cannot, and at the first time, for when, you, when I'm hearing the first few, I'm like, okay, I can understand that. It just kind of builds and builds with more and more exposition as it goes along. And I'm like, you kind of forget why the original, why this one doesn't work, and yet the original did, because, you know, less is more when it comes to horror movies. The more it comes up to your own personal, personal mind, the more fearful and unpredictable things can be, and much more scared you'll become. And this movie just kind of had too many rules, it just kind of established within it. Not to mention, I do think the ending was a little bit lacking when it came to an actual sense of success. Because, you know, it's a horror movie, everything kind of, and any movie in any way kind of builds and crescendos towards the end and this film does it in such a weird unsatisfying way where I just kind of went and that just kind of felt cheap and unearned and just didn't really feel with a superior tone overall I I thought it was a te technically it's really good but I forget what made the original so good to begin with it has some really messy writing and an off-putting direction and I wouldn't say off-putting, but it has a very flat feeling, and it definitely lacks a real unique colorization of what made the, the, the original so fantastic in the real first place. So I'm going to give Suspiria uh, 75%. Um, that's my rating for Suspiria. I do think it's overall technically really good, but I do think it kind of lacks for what makes a good home movie remake. But of my reviews, my last one is my favorite of the four, and that is Black Klansman, Black Klansman, directed by Spike Lee, and this is arguably his best film since he got game, uh, because this is an excellent film. In this film, you got 
John David Washington, who's the son of Denzel Washington, and he plays this man who, in the 70s, I believe in Colorado Springs, him and Adam Driver are kind of like inco inco incoherents with each other, and he and he kind of calls up the Ku Klux Klan and David Duke, and he's like, uh, yes, uh, I can't wait to apply for your group, and it just plays it on such a well-crafted, funny, meticulous, well-crafted note, which I love. It was such a freaking blast. You know, only in comparison to these other movies I've reviewed here, but this movie is just excellent. I, it's, if I was to make my top 10 of the year immediately, this would be in it. I don't know if it would be my top 5, but it certainly earns a spot in my top 10 already. It's so well crafted, so well written, so funny, and it bounces all that with such dark moments, especially when it dealing with stuff like the Ku Klux Klan and the beginning of um, the Black Panther movement at the time, and how it kind of shows uh, how, I hate to say this, um, I think anyone too, but it kind of shows it in just a good way of showing how similar they are and yet showing how unequal, how much of a time in an era where they're like on themselves, something, uh, what is going to happen, something like that. And it's just so well performed and so well written. I really found myself so just drawn into the film and his acting is fantastic from everyone. Topher Grace is just delivers that career highlight as the ever infamous David Duke. Um... It's just a really, really brilliantly funny movie. I love the majority of it. I do think the movie by the end kind of goes a little bit too long in my mind. And it, there's some stuff by the end that it should cut out in my mind. Um, not for its own sake, but for a sense of pacing. It's like, oh, okay, the movie's kind of going along now. And I'm like, okay, the perfect to summarize it is like there's a part in the end, like within the last 10, 15 minutes. I'm like, oh, great. My movie's going to end. Perfect. No. It's like, oh, shit. It just kind of keeps going. Okay. Uh, I'm like, when's it going to know? It just end on a note when it can. And it does end on a really good note on showing, I would say on a good note, because the stuff in the credits, it's like all the shit that's been happening in the last year, and Charlottesville, and a and, um, young woman who's killed and driving, like all that last year and all that, and it's like in memory of her. Um, it's an extremely relevant and profound, incredible movie. Um, and Spike Lee had, just makes it with such class, cleverness, and wit that makes it one of the best relevant and enacted films of the year. It's it's such a damn good movie, in my opinion. Uh, so, yeah, and I'm going to give... Um, also, some of the music stands out in not a good way. It just kind of comes in, because the movie, for the most part, doesn't play really much music, like no background noise or anything like that. And when it does happen, it so jolts out in a weird way where I just kind of go, that kind of was an odd tonal shift in my mind. But for the most part, I really dug this one. I really dug uh, Black Clansman for the most part. It's a really great movie. I highly recommend it. So, uh, so yeah, I really recommend it. And thank you for watching, as always. Uh, until then, thank you for watching, and see, and I'm going to get Black Clans in 89%. Uh, until then, everyone, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the future for more, for more, for more reviews, as always. Until then, peace. I'm going to fall.